Uh, well, the challenge that I've been uh, doing and uh, about to do as well is um, a North and South Pole back-to-back -back polar expedition. Um, actually starting with the South Pole. Um, it took me 50 days um, to get to the South Geographic Pole itself. And now I'm in a period of heading up to uh, the Arctic Ocean and doing an expedition from the North Pole to the Canadian coastline. Um, the reason why I'm doing it is um, three things really. One is through education, so I want students to tap into um, the expedition for looking at the environment and looking at uh, exploring for themselves. Uh, secondly, for companies, um, businesses to look at how the effect of climate change is hitting these polar regions, how it actually affects their companies. Um, so it's not just based within the polar regions. And thirdly, it's a personal journey. So it's it's something that's been my 27th expedition. I've uh, been in rescue and other things before. And this is like the pinnacle of my uh, career so far. I've done this extreme expedition. Um, through experience that I've had on previous polar expeditions, I know when it gets hard, I know when it, it gets easy, so I can sort of overcome that. It's my, it's my job, if you like. Um, uh, sometimes, during normal life anyway, out on the street in your hometown, uh, over a course of, say, ten days, you'll always have your up and down days anyway. But in these pure environments, they're exacerbated, so you, you think it's yourself, but it's not. It's just how you are as a human. And so you've got to recognise that on expedition. Um, so that's how I sort of get over, um, you know, feeling down or f when it gets tough. I just think, well, it's going. I'm going to get through it at the end of the day. So on the expedition, um, you know, do I get a chance to relax or am I constantly sort of uh, being pressured all the time? The idea of being on a long-range, hard expedition is to not make it hard for yourself, because it's tough anyway. So you're constantly trying to make things easy, um, and with that comes experience from having experience um, to keeping the routines very, very simple. So if there's any storms, bear attacks, open water, whatever, then you can deal with it um, quite, quite easily or quickly. Um, so. You know, generally, also in in the tent in the evening is the chance to relax. Um, so you need a nice sleeping bag so you can get a good night's sleep, and you know you treat yourself to some some different foods every now and again. And you can take an iPod or something with you, which I I lost on my second day of the South Pole expedition. Um, but all these things are there to sort of stimulate your mind and take you out of the environment just for a short while. Uh, biggest challenges so far uh, in the South Pole, because I'm just halfway through the expedition at the moment, is basically distance, um, covering a large amount of ground, um, and also being solo as well. Um, I've been solo before for 30 days, but that was around Svalbard, so there was a lot of mountains, a lot of bear activity, so there was a lot going on. Um, the South Pole was just a long stretch of pure ice, for 612 nautical miles, which is about 1,400 kilometres, so the length of Britain, if you like, I had to pull along with nothing else there, apart from myself and my own mind, to sort of cope with, and so that was a massive challenge. So some people have said that I lost part of my left foot on the expedition, which is which listening to that is, is quite an extreme way of saying that I've lost some of my skin on my bottom of my foot. It wasn't toes or, or heels or anything that fell off, but um, if you get a chance to see a photograph, the bottom of my foot is like that. There was this much skin that actually peeled off and there was raw foot underneath. And of course, you, you put in the weight of yourself and then you've got your equipment as well and you're sliding all the time uh, on skis. So. Um, after seven miles, I, I felt it burning, so I sat down, took my boot off, which I never do on a polar expedition, had a look and the skin just dropped down like this, and I had raw foot underneath. So I strapped it up and I managed to do another eight miles. Um, and then, uh, um, the Antarctica is a very forgiving place, it's a very dry environment, it's a desert. So what I did, I took the next day off, 
um, put some iodine on. Nobody could hear me scream in the Arctic, Antarctic. Sorry. Um, and I just bandaged it up, and it dried after about three or four days. Um, so I just continued. Um, for 42 days I was alone walking through this white void uh, and I knew that there would be strong winds against me, I knew there would be black, uh, whiteouts, um, injuries, everything that comes with an expedition. But then uh, probably by 43 I bumped into <laughs> uh, some Norwegian um, kite skiers, so they were coming back from the pole uh, kite skiing back to the base camp. Um, and they was, had their tents set up, there were six of them playing cards, eating nice food, being jolly, being sort of a group and I stuck my head in the tent and um, saw what I wasn't getting basically. Um, so yeah, that was an experience, just to step into their world just for a split second and then five minutes later I headed off. So I, didn't, I couldn't cope with it. <laughs>